If we go in another place here, can you see this stuff here? This stuff here, it's now called lithophilum. Litho from lithos, roca, and filum, planta. So it's something that now is living in intertidal zone. So between the Baja and the Alta Marea and no other places as well. Okay? And, and let me go further a little bit. Here you can see that below, above this number two, there is a reddish stuff, probably pile soil, and after there is a number three that is wonderfully exposed here. So, what is this number three? This number three are dunes. What bloody hell does dune there? Come on, dune? Dune now in Sardinia are present only in three places all around Sardinia. One is a national park, and another one is a wonderful beach in the north. But here, you, you can see that from the base to the top, there are something like 12 to 13 meters. So to preserve a so high dune, it means that they were severed. So what we have done here, we have done OSL ages. I have no idea, but I guess that you have no idea about OSL. O means optical. S stimulating L luminescence. So we use quartz grain to date the rocks. Nice, eh? And how we do? If this one is a quartz grain, when this grain is under the sunlight, it loses any kind of natural um, charge derived from uh, gamma ray or from a um, uh, gamma ray, what is that? Uranium, thorium, natural radioactive materials present in the earth. Because the sunlight is so strong and this became zero, the other radiation. So if I cover this quartz grain with other sediment, this grain can be recharged by the natural radioactivity present in the earth. And if I know the amount per day of this recharging, I, and I can measure the total charge, I can, give, I can get the time of burial of this deposit. Okay? This is what I am doing in my lab, together with another university in Milano and with Denmark. So, the other story, but the important stuff is that I got one, two, three, four, actually ages. And I were able to see that, for instance, the dew Formed, formed during 47 and 77 kilo years or so, thousand years ago. Important, you will see later. Moreover, we have found tropical warm fine fauna in the beaches. And looking in detail, we have found, can you see here, the clinoform related to dunes, similar to the big one I have shown you before, and here. Have you never heard in your life tidal notch? In uh, Italian we call it solco di battente. No idea about the Spanish one. But here, here, look here, this one is the modern one. So it forms when the waves cut and arrive at a carbonate cliff and they uh, excavate a little bit the carbonate bottom and they form this kind of scour here. And here we have this scour that is two meters below, above, sorry, the present sea level. And here we have another small one, four meters above the modern sea level. Okay? And of course, the dunes here are covering everything. Now, a little bit of summary just to be sure that you remember. We have Fossiliferal gravelly beach surface formed around one to five kilo years. We have silicyclastic beach about 100 kilo years. We have dune between 77 and 47, and we have tidal notches covered by dunes around dated around one to five and one zero zero kilo years. Now, if we move in the other part of the island. Remember that we were here in the west coast, we moved to the east coast. I'll show you another story. 
But now we know exactly what I'm showing you. Look here, the tidal notch, very well preserved in one side to the other. Here there is a small one, and here is four to eight meters above the sea level. We went, of course, in a cave with Laura, and uh, we sampled the sediment into the cave. Just to give you an idea, <coughs> there were sediment blown by the wind into the cave. So, of course, these were blown when in front of the cave there were the possibility, there was the possibility to get sand. Now, this cave are, you know, here are more or less in front of the sea. Okay? And we get ages. We get ages between 80 and 100 kilo years. So we went to see the features of the outside. And we found this coarse alluvial fan. We dated it 45 kilo years. We went up to the valley and we found a U-shaped valley. Can you see the U-shape here? Nice and preserved. And we went up and up and we found these deposits here. And these deposits now are found on the foot of the, not the glaciers, but of the snow deposit in the Alps. So our eyes became very open. And we said, what is going on? So, summary. Tidal notches, 125 kilo years, 4 to 6 meters higher, in some places also a little bit more. Aeolian sediment in the cave dated at about 100 to 80 kilo years. Alluvial fan dated at 40, U-shaped fan, and these deposits, we have called periglacial deposits, dated at 80. Wow. So now we have a lot of material to do data interpretation and to try to make a nice story about the Sardinia evolution. So I have placed these stuff here just to remember you that we speak about five because five is the last interglacial and the last interglacial is the closer to the present glacial, uh, interglacial time. So what we have found that during the last interglacial the sea level was four meter higher than today. This one is not new, okay? We found that since 80 kilo years, so the end of the interglacial, the sea level started to fall. We found that from 17 to 11, the sea level rises very fast. And we can say that now we are in a high stand that normally, if we, there is no influence, can last for other 15,000 years. Now, what about the temperature? Because, you know, when you discover data, you want to add information. We, we found that during the interglacial, the climate was subtropical. During, at the end of this interglacial, we found that the climate was warm and humid, of course, respect them today. And going down here, it became cold, humid, cold and dry, and cold and very dry, so very similar to Greenland today, just to give you an idea. And what we have done, we have tried to make a paleogeographic reconstruction of the area, and just to give you an idea, if you come today, you see this, but it was in this way. So totally different from today, and of course, the wind could take <coughs> this deposit and carry them into the cave. Now, what I have told you, it's new but not totally new. So what is really new from our side? Okay, if you see the curve that I have explained to you, and I, let me come back just a little bit to here, this curve here, we have tried to make something new, and we have discovered that this point is correct, but these two are the points that in previous papers they were considered some meters below the present sea level, are higher, are one meter, and some meter below, and we do not know. But the curve was apparently a little bit different, and of course, what is new is the age of some deposits that we have studied. Now, what we have seen important is that these cycles are 10 thousand years long. 
So they do not fit with any of the Milankovic cycle that are 100,000, 40,000, or 25,000. So we started to think about sub-processional cycles, and we are trying to arrive at solar irradiation variations. That will be now our next spot, I hope. And we are trying to understand how much is the continent of dust aerosol in the atmosphere. Now there is a project, and I'm reviewing this project, to try to analyze the dust found in Antarctica. To try to understand if there were, cycle, uh, uh, with a kind of cyclicity, period of dust and not dust. And this could influence the climate. So just before to go to the conclusion, think in your mind that if a small amount of dust, not produced by humans, but produced by wind, can influence the climate, think when we burn our gasoline to move a car, how much dust we put in the atmosphere. Example, but I can bypass. Just uh, other example, but this one is important because uh, remember that only in few years the Italy changed, probably due to the presence of this dust, from this shape to a bottle. <laughs> in few years means only 6,000 years. And 6,000 years, if you think, are recorded in the Holy Bible. We speak about the mega flood occurred and Noah took the old animals. This mega flood occurred during this time and changed Italy from this shape. The Po Delta was around here, now the Po Delta is here, to this shape. Now, let me go to the conclusion. Okay, further studies. Of course, we have to detail the last interglacial time to try to understand which similarities there are from this past and the present one. We have to study much more the dust in the atmosphere. We have to understand the solar radiation, of course, and the last point is also this point here. We have also to understand a little bit better the evolution of the Atlantic uh, what I can say, the Atlantic currents, because the Atlantic Ocean is playing one of the most important roles in our life. Of course, to do this we need money, and we are always fighting to get money, and of course when you go to an oil industry and you say, I am asking you money to measure the growth of a stalactite, they say, what are you doing? And you mean, it's always the same stuff. Now, let me conclude. This. So, which could be our feature based on uh, the study that we are doing? Of course, there are two ideas, the blue line and the red line. The blue line, you know, you will cool, and the red line, we will warm. So, I have no idea if we will finish in a hellish earth, or we will become ice, but of course, you know, if you check on science or other papers, you see that it's only one kind of uh, economical power to speak about climate. And uh, of course, because everybody are talking about it, I did it with you, and I hope you enjoyed with this nice picture. Thank you.